a do-it-yourselfer for many years and got involved with blacksmithing and coppercraft and if I could make something instead of buy it that was usually the route I took for better or for worse mind it and uh, so and I uh, operated a sawmill and worked on different uh, boats and stuff throughout the years so I had well over a hundred hammers for my own use then a family vacation when the kids were young, I went into an antique store and uh, I think I bought like a doctor's reflex hammer or something that we knew I had absolutely no use for and th that's when somebody should have stopped me. But uh, it didn't happen and the collecting bug kind of hit and yeah, you, probably, you probably all know collectors. Some of you might even be collectors, heaven forbid, of one thing or another. But it's hard to shake the habit and so after 42 years, it, but then I'm still doing it. <laughs> and uh, there did come a point though where my wife got a little bit tired of dusting hammers and she said, you know, I'm uh, going to have to limit you to no more than 100 hammers in the house. And so about that same time this building came up for sale and the hammer museum was born. Even though we still have a little over 100 hammers usually in the house too. But. <laughs> All right.